today we are talking about uh, health of the organization and how organizations keep healthy. I put this a bit away here. I'm hearing myself too, too much. And uh, from my point of view, this of course has a lot to do with um, how organizations adapt uh, adapt to new technologies, to new developments in their sector. Uh, so generally how they adapt for the future and only organizations that can adapt are healthy. And of course that has a lot to do with uh, how well people within that organization also learn how they develop, develop new knowledge uh, in order to help the organization adapt. So I'm, I'm quite uh, uh, happy to tell you today a few experiences that we made in the last four years in a very large uh, European research project uh, together with a lot of partners across Europe that we coordinated that uh, looked a little bit an, at how organizations can adapt uh, by improving workplace learning. We looked at two sectors in particular uh, and here's the first one construction, building and construction. Uh, so there's lots of uh, ways how you can build a house and uh, there's uh, ways how you can build houses very in a very sustainable way um, or in a very unsustainable way. Um, so for example, if you insulate your house, that's of course very nice because it saves CO2, but uh, the problem is you can use those styrofoam uh, uh, styrofoam uh, uh, boards yeah, from Bauhaus or wherever. And we now know that uh, we are going to have face a big problem in the future uh, because these platters are all basically toxic waste that we have to deal with at some point in time. Uh, and we have found uh, through talking to many of construction companies, uh, networks, uh, that the, the problem in using more sustainable techniques in construction is not so much that uh, they wouldn't be available. There's lots of techniques, there's lots of tools, lots of things that could be done, but what's missing is that people don't know how to really adopt them when they are working at the workplace. And that's why what we try to do. So here's a little example for you. So I was talking about those styrofoam insulation boards. Uh, here's a house that I visited uh, this uh, uh, earlier this year in Germany. And this is a house completely built of wood, clay, and straw bales. Would you believe it? And this is how it's done. So you have a little frame structure. They put straw inside and then I put a little clay on top and it's a not e not only a zero emission house it's a plus energy house so it even produces more energy than it uses this is the tallest uh, uh, registered clay and straw building uh, in the world and uh, uh, they have built up a uh, not only this building there and an exhibition but also a workshop where um, people can come uh, builders can come and actually try out this type of technique and here you see uh, we also tried a little bit uh, how to build a house in this way. Here's another example. We also looked at uh, healthcare and um, um, uh, the problem in healthcare in the UK is that um, NHS, National Health Service in the UK, uh, puts a lot of money into uh, creating evidence-based guidelines of how to treat patients. Um, so they go through a lot of trials and they find out what's the best way of treating patients. But then it takes many, many years until actually all the GP practices throughout the UK actually work according to them. So again, you, here you have uh, the issue that it is really hard to adopt innovations in organizations. And why is that so hard? Uh, it has to do with learning. And we also know that learning as we're doing it here uh, is not the most effective way of learning in such cases. Because knowledge is social, especially it's about innovation. You have to build trust, uh, you have to uh, 
um, get experienced experience from others of how to employ a particular innovation. It is very contextual, so it is happening at the very often at the place where you're at. So, for example, in that workshop or at the construction site. And uh, as we are talking about learning in uh, organizations, then it very often innovations also require that the whole organization changes. So the whole organization embarks in some kind of learning process. Uh, so what we did in the project was to think about some new ways of how we could support learning or how we could enhance learning going out of those kind of classroom settings as we have them here. Um, so what we did was uh, create a few uh, tools, ICT, apps, smartphone apps uh, and others that could on the one hand make this learning more social and bring it more into the workplace. And now I show you two examples uh, of the many things we created. Uh, and here's the first one, that's a video that you could start. Arzo is a tool for capturing events that can be used for learning. The tool allows recording and annotating video clips in domains such as construction, sport practice and other. This is Daniel. He comes to check the construction side of his company's next office. The goal of his visit is to check the progress of the construction and make preliminary considerations about the furniture layout. He uses Arzo to record and annotate the space with an intent to later share the recordings with his colleagues. This is the room that Daniel will be working at. He makes a quick recording of the room. Later, he adds his notes to the video. Daniel notices electric plugs installed on a wall that was planned for a whiteboard. He marks it as a problem. Daniel then visits the company that has its offices in the same building just a floor above. He records the place as an example of how to use similar space. At the end of his visit, Daniel checks out the roof of the building. He hears plans of renovating it into a terrace and notes that it still needs work. So, first uh, quick example, together with uh, Aalto University, uh, colleagues from the Media Lab there, we uh, tried and tested this kind of tool. Here's another one. This is particularly f uh, f uh, meant for trainers. They can create mobile learning apps for their students, apprentices and others, uh, which they can uh, easily create themselves, sitting on their computer, just moving some uh, apps into the smartphone and then sharing it with all their students and then the students can take this uh, learning packages away um, for example if they visit such a workshop that we saw before view instructions videos uh, and so on and also get uh, feedback from from their from their colleagues uh, there's a lot more and uh, we actually uh, at the end of the project uh, managed to to uh, to use those types of tools uh, in over 30 studies 700 learners across Europe use them and uh, yeah we made some uh, interesting observations so here are some of them um, for example in healthcare we observed that uh, the GPs and healthcare professionals were moving away from this kind of cooperative work uh, where basically you come together, agree what everybody does, then everybody goes away, they do their thing, then you come back together, you put everything together and deliver it, to a more collaborative way where you really uh, discuss things together, build on each other's contributions. And that's of course especially important if you, if, when we're talking about innovation because uh, in cooperative learning you have to already know basically what you get. Uh, and uh, if you don't know what you're getting, then collaboration is a much better way to work together. 
construction trainers much more willing to share their learning materials through such tools. Uh, we observed also in much more in-context help seeking and problem solving, so people really at the workplace asking colleagues, uh, trying to solve problems, and construction apprentices learning in a much more self-directed manner, so not waiting for anyone to tell them what they have to do, but going out and looking for solutions to their problem themselves. So uh, what we could observe is that employing such mobile and social tools was correlated with some kind of change in learning practices. And that's, uh, I think, quite a nice uh, result. But of course, this is not a one-way street because the learning practices also change how those technologies are then uh, used uh, and employed. Um, and of course, that's not the whole story. Uh, as we're talking about organizations, there is a lot more that had to happen to actually make this work. Management commitment, uh, we invested a lot into, or the organizations invested a lot into training, capacity building. Um, we actually created all those tools that you saw and, and the others uh, together with the stakeholders, with the workers, with the, uh, with the management, co-creation. We had to invent some kind of, or trainers had to invent some kind of new learning model. So how do we want to actually use those, uh, those new technologies? And of course, technological infrastructure, yeah, which is also in some construction sites, construction sites not really there uh, for really uh, supporting this kind of self-directed problem-based learning. So we called all of this together digital transformation, and that's what organizations, uh, many organizations nowadays go through, and here are some things that they have to consider if they uh, really want to make that work. So just in, just in uh, putting there a tool doesn't, of course, uh, solve any problems. Yes, and uh, as we are not only talking about healthy organizations today, but also healthy individuals and healthy society, I put here some kind of summary. So, healthy society, yeah, we, if everything works, we have green buildings, sustainable construction, and healthier citizens. Uh, we have more collaborative and more self-directed, self-driven problem solvers uh, that, as individuals, who help us to also adapt to the future. And we have adaptable organizations uh, and digital transformations in, in those organizations. So, of course, all these things somehow go together. Thank you very much. And if you're interested in some of the work we've been doing, learninglayers.eu, uh, we have published all the tools and everything there. You can have a look at uh, yeah, what we have been doing. Thank you.